Hello there and welcome. If you're seeing this, there's a, there's a pretty good chance that you're trying to learn how to make fonts. Now, um, I'm not the person to teach you how to design a font, because I'm not a font designer, and um, I, that's just not my, my realm of expertise. But what I can do is I can show you a good program to get started with that's free and pretty user-friendly. Font making can be one of those things that feels extremely intimidating to get into from the outset, and a lot of that has to do with it feels very technical, the resources online for it aren't the best, and uh, I f probably most of all is the software. A lot of the software can feel very unobtainable in the sense that stuff like Font Lab and font creator and some of the these other ones that you find when you look up are are very expensive font font lab you have to like sell a kidney to be able to afford it and then the the main one that comes up like the the big one that comes up when you just type in font creation software font forge i'm like 90 percent sure that wasn't made by a human that that feels like something made by a rogue AI running Windows XP more than something that a actual human made for human creation. It's it's a monolith of a software. You could make professional fonts with it, but good luck trying to figure out how to use it, especially as a beginner. So that's where Bird Font comes in. Bird Font is not a software I would want to use professionally if I was making fonts for a living. It's got its problems. Um, the drawing tools, like the vectorization tools, aren't great. It's pretty difficult to move points around, at least pr uh, precisely. It lacks things like holding down shift to move something along an axis. So you don't want to be doing stuff like that. But what it's great for is taking fonts that you've made elsewhere, like in Illustrator, which I'm going to be showing in this video, exporting them from there and then importing it and just doing the final touches like the kerning, the tracking, and maybe a little bit of alignment. So with that said, I'll be going about showing you how to uh, take a font that you've made in Adobe Illustrator specifically and export it from there in a way that you can then take it into bird font and then do those final touches and then, but when it's all said and done, you have yourself a font that can be downloaded onto your computer and used to say whatever profanity you want. Each section will be uh, broken up and put in the description below for ease of reference. Uh, you should also be able to see it on the timeline, but I, d I don't know. So yeah, I'll get started. So generally it's a good practice to download the software you want to use before you try and use it. That one took me a few tries to figure out. But to, to download BirdFont, you just go to birdfont.org and you click on the download button. Now, there's different kind of tiers of what you can legally do with the software depending on how much you pay. Um, we're just going to go with the free one because uh, to, to sell your fonts commercially, you have to pay at least five US dollars. And... The, the, you know, if you do end up using it, throw the guy a bone. But for this instance, let's just do no dollars. And you can just download it right here if you're using Windows 10. And if it's Mac OS, just put that one in. I'm going to just be showing off Windows 10 or Windows 11, whatever you're using. And um, if you're using Mac, you can figure that one out yourself. So to install, you just go through this thing, just put it wherever you feel like, and I'm not going to install it because I already have it installed on my computer, but you just go through this and then you got bird font installed on your computer. Congratulations. So this is what you see when you first open up the software. It's just a disclaimer saying that if you want to use it professionally or commercially, you got to pay for it, but we're not going to be using this commercially at least that's not the intent so let's just click that now this is what the interface looks like this is a font that i made a while back to test out the software and it's pretty basic um there's not a whole lot to look at and that's good 
these all do pretty basic things that they say they do. The only odd oddity is that if you want to use any of these transformation tools, you got to do it and then click this button to skew it and you have to select any of the select any of the ones that you want to do it to. So I'll, I'll horrifically deform this exclamation mark. Now the main things that you'll be using in bird font are the up actually they're up here. It is the import and export tab, the spacing and kerning tab, and when you go in here using these things just to set the tracking. And this is the thing that I really like about bird font is that when you go into the spacing and kerning and you click sh uh, show kerning tab, you can just type in stuff like cool beans. And from there, you can just click here and set the kerning between these letters. So then if I click E and A again, it has the same kerning. Pretty cool, eh? I, I don't know if this is what it's like in other software, but this is far easier than what goes on in FontForge, where you have to open up menu on menu on menu just to get to it and set them up all manually. This is just convenient. But we will not be making the font in this program. I didn't make this font. I made this font in here. One second. Uh, just to test out the tools. So this was just all built with lines. Don't do this. Build it in Illustrator. So to start out with, it's probably best to build your font in Adobe Illustrator because that's what most people will be familiar with. And it will kind of circumvent the problem that bird font doesn't have the best editing tools. Um, now, I'm not going to be building a font from the ground up for this demonstration. I will just be grabbing a pre-made font and kind of breaking it up and using it for example. So we will uh, we'll get started. So I'm not going to be doing a full alphabet, but there's a specific reason why I've picked um, these letters to do. They will be able to show um, how the kerning and whatnot works. But what you want to do with, um, with this is, I'm gonna delete these duplicates is you want to have it set up like so and then you want to create an artboard for each one because you will be importing the letters individually into bird font to then set up. Is it the most efficient method? Probably not, no, but again it's easy. It's very very easy and it will get you a font up and running very quick. So get each one of your letters on a individual artboard and then you go to File, Export, Export for Screens. And now what you want to do is label each one of your letters what they are. I simply use the letter they are in either cap or lower case now, because uh, uppercase and lowercase are not distinguished in a uh, the file explorer, you need to make sure that you either distinguish it by like G low or something like that. Not low, yeah. G low or something like that, and or export it in two batches is what I did, as I would export all my uppercases and all my lowercases because. If you try to export them all and you just have one labeled G and one labeled G but it's uppercase, they will have some issues. Like when I've exported, it'll export all of the lower cases with all the uppercase names. So you just need to do it. I generally export it in two batches is what I found was the easiest. And so now what you got to do is you just change it to SVG and you click export artboard. Then after you get it exported, you want to go open up bird font, click SIL, open font license, because again, this is an educational purpose. You're not going to be selling this presumably. Go to new and you open up a new font. 
So for this demonstration, I've exported a bunch of these, but I will be only importing the lowercase b and the lowercase y. And to do that, you click on the letter you want to import, click on the hamburger menu, go to import export, import SVG file. Don't click import glyph as SVG, you click import SVG file or control I. I'll click control I for the sake of simplicity. And you simply click on it, and then the easiest way to align this to the bottom is to go over here, where, um, one second, if it'll just go away, it should be an X and a Y. You go over to it, you right click on it, and then it should come up here and say set. You highlight this, and you put it as zero. And that's it. Now, that, uh, say you had a, O or a C or something like that, it makes it pretty easy because you can just left click it, I mean right click it, excuse me, and go negative three. And that will help you keep the uh, ascender and descender like little overlap that you want to do with those letters. But again, this is a B. I just want to set this to zero. Now, for Y, Y goes below the line. So I'm going to import it, and I can set this to zero just to get a baseline. And then what I'll do instead of typing it in is I'm just going to click on Y coordinate and drag down until I have it where I want it, which is about there. I'll probably just even this out to set 15. And what this would help with is, say I wanted to import a G or any other uh, letter that has a below line like descender, I can simply go in and instead of trying to finagle it like visually, I can just go in and set the Y coordinate to negative 15. And I will also set the right bearing to zero. Now, for sake of example, let's say that you have all of your uh, letters imported. And now what you need to do is deal with spacing and kerning. Now to get the spacing started off with, notice how these bearings are set to zero. Now that's not because that's what you want it to look like. To open up the kerning tab, you click on spacing and kerning and go to show kerning tab or control K. So now that you're in the kerning tab, you'll notice that the spacing's all janky. It's too tight. It's just uncomfortable. So what you got to do to fix these tight bearings is after you have them all set to zero, you go here, click Control A, and now up in this corner, you'll notice these two brackets right here. And this is adjust right side bearing and adjust left side bearing. I have them set to three, but to uh, pick whatever one you want, you can either drag up and down, or right click and type in. And then all you do is you click transform. And now you'll notice each one has three on either side. And when you go back into the kerning tab, the kerning has become a little more comfortable. But now you'll notice that between Y and B, things look good. But between B and Y, things look a little wide. So the nice thing about bird font, uh, in comparison to particularly FontForge, all you have to do to remedy this is click and drag. And now you have a bye 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 bye. And there you have it. So this is the basics of how to set it up. There's a whole bunch more you can get into. There's like a bunch of tools, and most of them are pretty self-explanatory. Now to export, you first need to make sure that your file is saved. And then, all you need to do is go to Hamburger Menu, Import and Export, Export Fonts, and it will bring you to this menu where you can then name it.
and then click export. And then what will happen is you just it will just export into the exact location in which you saved your original file. And you can see right here the B and the Y are now smaller. Now Um, making sure that things are super duper properly sized is a little more complicated but I think for the most part in building your first font getting it built ready and exported to use in a thing like Adobe After Effects uh, uh, Adobe Illustrator now there are some proportion issues that the B's and the Y's are significantly smaller but to be completely honest, that's not the biggest deal when you're just getting started. Uh, I think getting your font into a software where you can get it kerned and exported as a proper op uh, open type like file, that's what matters more. I actually don't think this is open type. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, this is a true type. But um, you have to pay to use open type. But the thing is, is that this is a pretty quick and dirty and simple way to make a first font without having to get into the minutia of learning other software. And I hope that this uh, tutorial was of some value. And uh, Godspeed, my good people.